A new day. It is Friday. Welcome back, everybody, as we begin on a gorgeous blue sky sunny day here in Berlin, Germany. The hair is wafting in the non-wind of my apartment. Welcome back as we continue our journey into the irrational, our journey into significance, our journey into what happens next, maybe a window on the future. Welcome back, Artist Journal, March 15th, 2024. Singing from my apartment here in Berlin, Germany. My name's Adrian Pocabelli, and we begin we begin again. And as I said, I think last show in the last few shows, I'm a touch exasperated in trying to make this show smaller. It is another pretty large show. So again, I've been warning about this. I may do some radical experimentation here. And all I can say is I hope there's uh, patience should things... I'm sort of just reserving the right to be experimental and it not be a a surprise. You know, it's sort of like it reminds me of, you know, when people get angry, usually the reason people get angry, some some kind of life coach people, I'm thinking of Brian Tracy, the great Brian Tracy. Uh, Anger often comes from upset expectations, I thought it was going to be this way, and now it's this way. I'm angry, right? And we don't want to talk about, you know, anger on this gorgeous, cloudless sky, sunny day here. But this is why I prepare your expectations, just so then everything's cool. Should I, you know, I keep saying this, let's see if it happens. Uh, Should we experiment uh, with the format? Because the format has grown organically here, and I don't think I'd do anything too radical, But it's simply, I I would love to condense this show just a little bit. 45 minutes to an hour seems completely plenty to me. Uh, But we shall see. Anyway, so uh, beautiful, incredible uh, head-turning work here from Ailey, again, using M-Props. And Ailey, just to kind of couch this, uh, Ailey put out a video, which we're going to look at in a second, and M-Props actually reached out to me I think it was yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, saying, hey, why don't you uh, join M-Props or try it out? And the reason I'm saying this, and I, I did, the reason I'm saying this is this has nothing to do, and I don't expect anybody to believe me, but this has nothing to do with me starting with Ilay here. It is actually the work itself, and I didn't want to penalize Ilay or M-Props by not putting it up because they, you know, Ilay had made kind of a cool video of the pirate ship of the, of the mind here. Uh, So just to kind of preface this, because the, you know, as they say in politics, perception is reality. And, uh, but we're not going to worry about that. Uh, We're doing a journal here. And uh, the beautiful thing, finally here, before we kind of dive in, uh, the beautiful thing about starting your own thing, doing a journal like this or starting your own project and kind of being the overseer and being able to make all the decisions is you don't need to worry about that. I do need to worry to a certain degree about, let's say, perception and if people think this and that. Uh, but ultimately, it's kind of it's your journal, and it's like uh, you got to be true to your journal. And it's a beautiful thing to not have to worry to a certain degree. It's uh, it is what it is. Uh, so enough speech making here. Let's get into it. So isn't this interesting? I mean, maybe like you. This this was listed on on object and maybe like you created an improv studio. This is Ile, uh, only two tezos, edition of five. Aw heck, picking one up. I uh, like you. Maybe the first thing I think of here is Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. I think of Picasso in these beautiful masks here, and even just say the nude women and everything. And again here. I mean, it almost will bring up actually Demoiselle d'Avignon, that very famous, I guess you'd consider it a rose period painting, I believe, 1907. Uh, You know, when you see documentaries of modern art, then the music starts, the dramatic music, and Demoiselle d'Avignon shows up. Uh, This this one especially. But before we actually look at that, I do want to... Uh, this It's not a huge work in the sense of pixels, but I, I do want to also just highlight here, uh, like really what we're seeing, and we have more works actually, Kika Nicolela in the uh, AI section uh, with M-Props. It's pretty impressive, okay, what we're seeing here uh, in terms of the ability to render texture, painterly texture in a convincing way 
we've seen quite a bit of it uh, over the last few months, but I mean, really, it's pretty impressive. This is AI, and actually, let me quickly uh, take you through some of these. And it's kind of, again, the promise of AI. I mean, look at how uh, beautiful you see, like this is the stuff that I just love that my eye gravitates towards. You see the kind of the pencil mark, first of all, kind of multimedia kind of look to it. Maybe that's a charcoal type, uh, a charcoal type line making. Uh, and then, you know, and almost, you know, looks like paper underneath, but then it's painted over here. And again, my eye is drawn to almost like we saw with that computer artist whose name escapes me right now, who didn't go all the way to the edge. And then just like, I love stuff like this. And I'm not even sure why, uh, but I love these gaps, these irrational decisions. Because again, for you know, that's kind of where the poetry lies. For whatever reason, this mystery that we engage on here on a regular basis here, this conversation we're having is full of mystery, isn't it? As to why is this working, right? And it's really just a kind of ongoing conversation as to trying to figure out what's going on here story of my life here. And again, look at the beautiful brush strokes. Beautiful brush strokes. So again, and the composition. Again, the promise of AI. Uh, like it's hard not to see, uh, you know, and we're kind of just getting started. It's hard not to see this continuing to turn heads. And again, I was hearing, you know, I was listening to an interview today on uh, tech and GPTs and all that. And again, forgive the hair. Uh, you know, this kind of idea that, uh, you know, there's an order of magnitude, uh, this idea of acceleration of technology and, you know, where before maybe there was 40 years from, you know, the space program to the computers of the space program uh, or however many years, I don't even know what it was, but there's orders of magnitude of evolution in technology and that this speeds up. And... What used to take, according to this person, uh, you know, 40 years is now getting done an order of magnitude in a year, right? With uh, these GPTs and this AI technology, this what, what they were calling uh, the exponential age, right? With what Kathy Wood and Rahul, R Raul Pal called the exponential age, among others. Ray Kurzweil, we're going to live forever, Right. Someone interviewed Ray Kurzweil recently. We should find that. I, I should find that interview. Uh, so all to say, uh, this is kind of where we are in the visual arts, isn't it? Like as far as this AI thing and, and how can we not, you know, for all the skeptics out there, how can we not pay attention to AI, AI art? How can we dismiss AI art in the age we live in? And I would argue, as I said yesterday, and I mean, interestingly enough and unplanned enough, I think we started with Strange Thing last time. Interesting. Another AI artist. Uh, you know, like, how can we, again, with this kind of, this thing that's completely changing, uh, with our world that's changing so fast, how can we, and, and as I was going to say with Strange Thing, I start with the work. I start with the work itself. The kind of, as I always kind of call it, this reptilian, uh, you know, what on a reptilian level, almost on the subliminal level, before I even know what I'm seeing, I can feel like I know if I like an artwork or not, oftentimes. Not always. Hasdrubal Waffle, challenging artist, Nov1914, Martin Bruce, some of my favorites, some of a lot of our favorites, uh, those aren't so easy. And part of the delight of those artists is the challenging of that reptilian boom, boom. I, I you know where you just know instantly, almost before you even see it, your brain already is kind of loves it or or doesn't. So uh, all to say, uh, all to say, there's a lot going on here. And if I keep talking like this, this show will go on forever. So let's keep going here. Uh, a beautiful, uh, fascinating, right? There's, I think this is an edition of five. And again, we'll bring up Demoiselle d'Avignon so people know what we're talking about here. I think everybody does. And, and I mean, you can see the Picasso here. I think I like, because I see the blue period. And we're almost back. Shall we go to Picasso, uh, uh, Picasso's blue period? Uh, because 
we're almost back to this idea that we we're talking about in the hyper, what we're calling the hyper postmodern over here. This idea of, and we should actually get ChatGPT to help us out. I keep saying this, but maybe next week when I hopefully shorten the show, we can start going more in depth on, uh, you know, on certain aspects of uh, where we can start to unpack things in ChatGPT. Now, let's just quickly go here. Uh, so I feel like, I mean, doesn't that work kind of say blue period to you a little bit here that we're seeing here, even here? And then if we go back uh, to here a little bit, I feel like there's a blue period work. This is more green and then you see the mass uh, so who knows? Uh, but all to say, uh, a pretty impressive looking series here from Ilay. And what I was going to say about that, going on tangents all over the place. Happy, happy Friday, everybody. Uh, sort of like we saw with Strange Thing and the cracks in the oil paint and talking about the hyper postmodern is this idea, kind of it's basically another word for hyper real. Uh, which is this idea that there's no referent. And we need to bring up ChatGPT to actually just verify everything I'm saying, but there's no source that it's being copied from directly. Sort of like we saw with the cracked oil paint, it's not like Coons, again, uh, copy, his team copying the cracks in the oil paint in his version in the Gazing Ball series of the Mona Lisa. This, again, postmodern work, we might say, the copy of the copy. Uh, with the hyper postmodern in our discussion that we're having, our little cafe coffee discussion here, il bar, uh, uh, in, in this discussion, there is no thing we can point to. There's no reference. There's no referent. There's no clear that is being copied here. Uh, and we could say the same thing here. We could say loosely, this kind of has a Picasso feel to it, right? A kind of Demos And let's bring up Demoiselle d'Avignon really quickly. Uh, uh, but we don't see it directly as we just saw uh, when we did the search here. So kind of interesting. And again, here, there's this, this mask here, this shocking and provoking work, provocative work at the time. And you almost like these masks here, even just the idea of having several kind of nudes uh, joined together here, this one especially, uh, this one here, and then we go over to here. I hope Ilay doesn't mind me doing this, but I think it's interesting. Because again, it evokes without being a direct copy. Again, so uh, what I'm, again, so what we see, it's interesting how this is censored. I've never seen that before on Google. The demoiselle, I see a provocative work. So all to say, uh, you know, we're back to this idea that we can't directly point, but we can have it, but it's almost to this cultural landmark, so to speak, or visual uh, trope that we all kind of know, and it evokes that. And kind of an interesting, again, what I sometimes call in when we're discussing with RJ, RJ's work, spectral pastiche, this idea that you put into the, I mean, RJ takes it, uh, he does another step where he'll say, okay, I'm just speculating, make a David Hockney work, uh, change the pool and blah, blah, you know, try something different, make a variation on David Hockney pool work. And then RJ will go out and basically trace it using pixel software, as far as I understand, as far as I can tell. As And I call that spectral pastiche. We're kind of in the same area and it's all using AI, which is interesting. And the final kind of, the, the, the kicker here, though, is the important thing. Though, I'd say the reason why it truly is merits discussion on a, you know, in a true, truly merits discussion is because the, as we're back to this reptilian, the immediacy of the, uh, the aesthetic power uh, that we're seeing in these works. Uh, it's pretty impressive, right? I mean, just that's a nice composition. Like if you had made this as a, you know, a work on paper or, you know, a gessoed paper and put paint over top and you'd be pretty impressed, wouldn't you? Right? If someone did this, right? I mean, it, you, you know, if you didn't know any better, you might think it was a similar to the same artist even. Although, again, it's quite different and uh, apologies to Ilay. Uh, so 
Uh, and this is quite different over here. So uh, all to say, and this one, yeah, th this one has a bit of a different feeling to it. All to say, the works are beautiful and they're provocative. And uh, again, we just see the power of MPROP. So I'm going to hopefully, I mean, there's so many things I need to do, but hopefully I'm going to try and experiment with that this weekend. But I, you really just got to focus, so I will try. Uh, also hilarious and thank you to Ile. Uh, Pe Pe Peonies, and it's actually, uh, I mean, this awesome video. I'll play a tiny bit of the music. It was made in Suno, the AI that we posted in the community there. Oh yeah, you can even hear it. Where you... So, kind of hilarious with the pronunciation here. Peonies. <laughs> so I came back. I went to an art opening yesterday. I don't even... What did, which one? I, Ventrup here in Berlin. And it was hilarious. I got back uh, to this uh, hilarious video. So thank you, Ile. And again, I would have started with Ile's work had she not done that. I, I just say it out here. Nobody has to believe me, but it's true. Uh, and I want to give a big thank you. So I was talking about how what a if I if this was available, this work by Nov nineteen fourteen of the flamenco dancer, I would have loved to have bought that and given it to my mom. Well, uh, just a sign of how cool this community is. Spritz, who picked up the work, this one of one, this beautiful one of one by Nov nineteen fourteen, sent it to me. Uh, so NFT Spritz, uh, what a great sport Spritz is. If there is a Twitter, I would share it here. Uh, but just a really, uh, what a great sport. So thank you, Spritz. And uh, feel free to leave your, if you're on Twitter, I'm not sure if you have a Twitter, but I'd be happy to share your Twitter uh, and return the favor as much as I can. So uh, just totally awesome. Thank you, Spritz. Uh, I'm going to have to set up a wallet for my mom. And uh, shout out to mom if you're watching. So... Uh, let's let's continue here. 17 minutes in. Where would you rather be? Uh, so let's find out. Uh, Chris C R L S D R D R C H. Thank you so much. I think that's Chris. Uh, Chris War, I believe. So thank you. Great to hear from you, Retro Manny. Great show as always, Adrian. Thanks so much for showing my audiobooks and possibly crediting me with being the first on that front. I haven't done the research, but you might be right. Well, I've never heard of anybody uh, doing an audiobook. I guess maybe the place to look maybe would be Zora, if anybody has done it. Awesome works on the show, but the standout for me is Kurt Hustle Collective. Honestly think they can do no wrong. Uh, they are a real, uh, they keep it unpredictable, don't they? And uh, again, Kurt Hustle, I was never a big video art person. Like, I kind of started with static art, art that doesn't move. And so for me, even to go to GIFs was a bit of a leap. It was kind of like once I saw enough and once I saw enough Haiti Rocket, I was like, okay, okay, this is great. I can live with this. And now, you know, it's part of the, the visual language that I speak and breathe. Uh, but the air that I breathe here. Uh, but Kurt Hustle was sort of like the first video. Because I've seen, and the issue was, is I'd been to a million contemporary, or I've been to contemporary museums a lot. And the video is often for me personally, it was kind of dry. So what a relief to find Kurt Hustle Collective, and they're incredibly uh, awesome and fun and exciting and brilliant music and awesome production and hilarious content uh, works. Uh, it's some of my favorite. And again, I discovered in Haiti Rockets collection early on. Uh, so yeah, I agree with the shout out. P.S. I think it's time we start that GoFundMe for a new computer for you, unless your glitch on PC is up to the job. It is a Mac, interestingly, and it seems to be holding up pretty good. Uh, like I mentioned, and I totally appreciate it. I think the way, if, if I ever was, so far so good, and I think I'm okay. Uh, because again, like Ile was actually seemed ready to do fundraising too, and that was totally cool and awesome. But as I mentioned that time, uh, the problem is, is if let's say the community fundraises a computer for me, it's going to be hard for me to take on a psychological level. I kind of feel like I owe like part of the beauty of this program on a personal level is I show up because I want to and I not because I feel like I have to. But if all of a sudden someone's if I start getting, you know, computers, you know, then all of a sudden there's a sense of like, oh, well, should I go? You know, maybe I may be on vacation in Sicily 
where I'm going to in the next, you know, month, in a month. Uh, but maybe, you know, I shouldn't take off, you know, so I'll just say thank you. And if I ever were to do it, I think I would probably just put out artworks uh, to say, okay, and then people would still get something. And then I wouldn't feel like there's so much that's necessarily uh, owed back in a sense, you'd still be getting something. And, you know, so who knows, but I totally appreciate it. And again, just like we saw with Spritz there with Eile in the video. Uh, yeah, fam, all fam here. So great to uh, great to hear from you, Manny. And congratulations on the audiobook, Sarah. That's a very cool initiative. Manadol, thank you for sharing my art, NP1. I am really glad. I'm glad you watched, Manadol. Uh, just an awesome uh, pixel artist there doing the cats. Uh, Stuart Reed, GM Adrian, I think the mind must necessarily be in the whole system. Yes, this is a great uh, question, because otherwise we wouldn't call an octopus an individual. It has a brain in each arm, unless some brains have a mind and others don't, which I don't think could be true. Unless some brains... So I don't know enough about the octopus. Uh, but yeah, so, so it has a brain in each arm. So yeah, and then so is the middle of the mega brain. And the way I think it is, the, you know, the way I see it, I kind of see the nervous system to ultimately, I see the nervous system as one big brain, right? It's just there's expendable. I was kind of doing more thinking on this after Rada's comment there. Uh, it, it's almost like there are expendable parts of the brain. Say, like, if you lose your arm, pray, you know, knock on wood, uh, then uh, that's an expendable part. But if you lose this, this is regulating so many organs and involuntary organs that, of course... Uh, that's kind of not expendable. So I kind of agree. That it's like they're, it's all the, uh, you know, inner space, perhaps we could say, right? There is an inner phenomenon of experience, but uh, some are, you know, in, some we need. Otherwise, game over, let's say. So uh, thank you for the comment and enjoying the conversation here, Stuart. Uh, glad you like, glad to, glad to hear from you. Rada Yonke. Ready to collect some gra grails? As always, thank you for your curation. Uh, you're more than welcome, Rada. Thank you for the comment. Uh, Kyle Flemmer, the coveted first. <laughs> the first comment. Thanks for sharing Snow Sprite today, Adrian. Nowhere I'd rather be. Totally awesome and just awesome to hear from you, Kyle Flemmer, KF on Twitter. And a few comments just here on the show. And thank you again for all the support there. Uh, Peter the Roman... Talking of sport art, you should check out Oof Gallery in London. It's in Tottenham Ham Football Club Stadium, and it's dedicated to contemporary art and football. How cool is that? Again, isn't it interesting? I find this a very provocative, interesting area, this idea of sport art, and I just never thought of it. It's kind of the beauty of doing a show like this, is it kind of forces you to think about things. And again, is it all these bodies colliding and everything? The drama of the body... Uh, it gets, gets it, it's taken to a whole other context and level with sports. It, you know, you're heading the ball, you're kicking the ball, which will never happen in just like a simple painting. It's like an action painting. It's like, uh, you know, again, you, you decontextualize the mythology, like you take a mythological painting, who Poussin, take a Poussin, you know, doing some, you know, I think, I don't know if Poussin was a neoclassicist, but definitely had a classical, I think it was too early for that, but definitely had a classical uh, doing mythological works. Uh, you start to abstract away the bodies. Uh, and I would argue there's quite an interesting similarity between paintings of mythological or even biblical stories and sports. Once you start abstracting from the, I guess what you'd call the manifest content, the surface content, you know, to give like a Freudian angle on it. So all to say uh, super interesting on the sport art. And if I'm ever in London, I will definitely check that out. Acid Boy, awesome to hear from you. A couple of works this episode. Uh, keeping it real over there. Rural Idol. Oh, thanks for the shout out. I'm so glad this was more. Right. So uh, I, I went into advertising. Maybe I should have been an artist. Uh, usually it's the artists in the opposite. So maybe I should have went into advertising. I'm so glad this was more upbeat tweet and not my ladder trade of George, Constanda, George Costanza gifts. In all seriousness, Tuke's story of hope was a lovely counterpoint to my mid-40s career ennui. You're a gem poco, keep doing it. 
Well, thank you, Rural. And uh, yeah, no, I, I'm yeah mid 40s as well. So I hear you. But no ennui. I mean, this show keeps things interesting for me. Uh, let me tell you, start a journal, Rural, if you're feeling the uh, ennui. Uh, Denise, thanks a lot, Adrian, for giving me a shout out on your show. It was awesome as usual. Well, thank you for the support, Denise, and very cool work. I think that was acrylic on paper. Human boy, the ship is taking on water because there are so many people on it. Love that. Really enjoy how inclusive the show is and still always adding more to explore. Still seems like I find one new artist here every week. Great episode, Adrian, as always. Well, very many thanks, uh, human boy. Appreciate that. The piece is in this episode. That's great. Bull's longtime viewer here, too. I'm glad you guys are still enjoying it, you know, and not getting kind of tired of what's happening here. Uh, Anna Dart, just awesome. Always awesome. Well, just awesome to have you, Anna. And strange thing, thank you again, friend, to answer the GM question. So remember the spray paint on the, on the painting with GM on Strange Thing's second painting we showed last show? It is indeed AI prompted alongside the image. No Photoshop. Uh, so very cool. Uh, thank you for the feedback there, and great to hear from you, Strange Thing. Saint Sola, absolutely love Strange Thing art, pure fire, absolutely. And Lily Illo, uh, so many people on board, what a great ship to be a part of. Thank you so much, Adrian, for being such a great captain. Well, thank you. Great episode. Thanks again for including me in this episode, too. The second work you showed within the four of mine is actually a work I collected from Stotkull. So, a uh, quick correction there. So, Stotkull. Yes, yeah, so I may have uh, got confused there as I was running through things. A uh, single thought derived from a tethered soul from such a beautiful collection of AI works called Dreams of the Machine on Objects. So go check that out. Stotkull uh, was the artist there. So thank you for the correction there. And again, that's Leo, also known as Stotkull. Go give Leo, you know, again, at Stotkull a follow on Twitter and sorry about that Leo and I will uh, I'm gonna I'll try and keep tabs feel free to post works in the community uh, just to keep them on my radar and we'll try and put you on the show again and uh, get your name right so also uh, Lily I want to show you thank you for showing my works I want to show you a little piece of the process Erasing the architect from his chair, reimagining more chair. Sometimes the traces of architect mean his odd shadows or a foot or a bit of clothing he may have discarded on his chair as he departs. Exploring the structures that hold us together that we leave and what we leave behind, still a portrait in absence of its subject. Very interesting. So it's almost like the shadow here is from the architect that has disappeared and removed interestingly. So the AI artists here, it's really hard to fade AI art, isn't it? Uh, so just, just by virtue of what we're seeing, and here's the community. And again, thank you, everybody. I think I put this one in the videos here. Odd Lavox, thank you. And just thank you, everybody. Kurt Hustle. What an awesome community to have Kurt Hustle uh, and their awesome uh, trailers there. Gaspard, thank you. Danae, a mythological work, a nice abstract here. So all sorts of cool things going on here. Error pleasures. Yes, so feel free to share the art. And this one also, I mean, Morgan Hybe Flowers. I think I was going to include this and forgot to. So yeah, so I have so many tabs open, uh, even with messages and everything. Thank you, everybody, for just being patient. Uh, it's a lot. This beautiful works. This is on object. Uh, nice work. Auto reflect. So again, thank you, everybody. And we're going to look at this work there in the uh, physicals. So just totally awesome. Uh, and yeah, we'll look at these also. Uh, here we go. Uh, Trippy Collector was lucky enough to collect this insane piece from Element Lee. So remember this was for sale. Uh, you get the physical. Highlighted in an artist journal a couple of episodes ago, it's being shipped to Vegas as we speak, and then we'll have it framed. How cool is that? So it wasn't clear in the NFT here that the you get the physical, but you do. How cool is that? So pretty cool. Uh, so just in passing, so Roberta Smith, kind of a small institution here, maybe not so small institution at the New York Times. Uh, Robert's, Roberta Smith, I think it's Jerry Saltz's wife, if I'm not mistaken. I think they live together. Uh, and I think wife uh, is retiring from the New York Times. Roberta, pioneering co-chief art critic, is retiring after more than three decades and 4,500 reviews and essays. So uh, all to say, co-chief art critic. Now, it comes up a lot here. Uh, you know, sometimes I get re referenced. I do not consider what I do here art criticism, by the way. 
I'm simply talking about art uh, as an artist. Uh, so it's kind of a different thing. I don't really, like, I've never really bought into the whole idea of art criticism. Like, if we even look at Vasari, Giorgio Vasari, The Lives of the Painters and Sculptors, I think is the name of the work. I don't think I have it here, although I had a beautiful edition back in we're, Toronto or Sass. It's I think it's in Toronto. Beautiful edition. Uh, Piero La Francesca on the wrap of the book. It's a beautiful edition. If you can find that, I think if you look for the Piero de la Francesca, it's a blue uh, book. Anyway, uh, uh, what was Vasari doing? I mean, he wasn't going in and saying, uh, hey, this is good, this is bad. It was more just saying, uh, you know, here's Michelangelo, and let's kind of try and say as much, like record as much as possible there's a biographical element and the stories that come with Michelangelo. Let's talk about that. It, it was kind of already, just by virtue of Vasari talking, who he was talking about, kind of, that was already the quote-unquote criticism. It's like, this is significant enough uh, where we it's worth saying something about. And that's kind of where I come from. Like, I, It's not about saying this is good, this is bad. It's more about... It, what I'd almost be tempted to just call like illuminating uh, significance. It's like, what is visual art? It is significance. It's visual communication, right? It's visual communication. I mean, if you really just boil it down and what is visual communication? Well, there's meaning, right? There's meaning that's being transferred or understood, interpre interpreted. And so all, I, you know, so that's what I see just as far as what I'm doing over here. It's just illuminating meaning, meaning, so to speak, just adding color to it, adding light, uh, you know, shining the light on it, so to speak. Anyway, how far? We're already at half an hour here. We're going to speed up. Getty Museum, this is a big deal. My friend Arnaud sent this to me. Thank you, Arnaud. Getty Museum releases 88,000 images of artwork with CC0. So John Paul Getty Museum, more than 88,000 works under creative, is released more than 88,000 works under CC0, Creative Commons 0 putting the digital images, images of items from its impressive collection squarely and unequivocally, unequivocally, I should really know how to pronounce this, unequivocally into the public domain. Uh, so, pretty interesting. Digital reproductions of public domain material must remain in the public domain, uh, according to Creative Commons advocates. In other words, no new copyright, copyright should arise over the creation of a digitized twin. Uh, that's very interesting. This must be quite disruptive because I've actually dealt with this when I've been trying to get very high-res versions of paintings. I've actually, uh, for some of the works that I worked on, on the Screen Memory series, because there are people, uh, there's one in, I think, Milan, and their job, I can't remember what they're called, it's years ago that I reached out to them just saying, how much would this cost to license? Uh, it was like something like $1,000 or something, right? Uh, so all to say, uh, kind of disruptive to people like that. Uh, I'm not even sure if they're in business anymore because I used to be on their email list and they I don't get emails from them anymore. You know, and this can't help, can it? So just an interesting thing for all the appropriators out there. Kalo, I thought this was really interesting. So of course, who has the newsletter, has been on the space, uh, was on a podcast of Kalo's. Uh, GM on-chain subscription. Via Hyper Subs XYZ is almost ready. I'm super excited about this. I think this is part of Farcaster uh, or Warpcast. I think Farcast is the protocol. So I think this is really, so I think it's in the intersection of art and blockchain. So I'm not even exactly sure. Paragraph.xyz. I think Kalo might have brought that up, but I think it's kind of cool. Uh, and here are all of the things you get. So that is pretty cool. Uh, Art the Mort. Since November, we've shown with Art Crush 175 artists all across Belgium. And I'm still looking for, I probably need to reach out to them because I had downloaded the video that they had of a work of mine and I never uh, had showed it here. Uh, but anyways, shout out to Art the Mort and Art Crush uh, for doing this. We saw work yesterday. Artists all across Belgium on nearly a thousand billboards. If you do the math, it means that we've shown digital art to the eyes of millions almost half a billion times. So pretty rad. Uh, so congrats to Art the Mort. Demon Ego, one of the worst definitions that belittles my personality, life purpose, and passion is the title NFT artist. All parts of my life, I am someone who organizes and shapes my environment, my relationships, my family, my daily plans. My impression here is Demon Ego wouldn't mind being called an artist, just not an NFT artist. 
uh, doesn't want to be pigeonholed, especially, you know, there is Demon Ego working uh, with multiple mediums and right. Uh, so, uh, but that's probably where most of, although I think actually, in, if I remember right from the uh, Twitter space, Demon Ego actually does have a work in a museum in Greece. I was going to say maybe a lot of the success for Demon Ego is coming out of the blockchain scene. Uh, but I think exactly like Demon Ego had done things before uh, arriving here, uh, interestingly, and shapes my environment, my relationships, my family, my daily plans, and the opportunities and the places where I spend my time solely according to my art. It's been like this for 17 years and will continue like this for the rest of my life. For me, creating artworks is not a profession, not a hobby, not a project, not a fad or something I will stop doing once I gain enough money or popularity. It's never been like this. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Even if NFTs didn't exist, I would still be creating art. We can just be grateful they do because it makes things a little easier for us out here. As a result of all this, I will continue to ignore those who ascribe to me the title of NFT artist and those who do not bother to learn about my past and what I've done so far. So interesting. And yeah, probably just prefers, I assume, prefers the artist moniker. Psycho, uh, thank you so much everyone who visited my show at Art Fair Tokyo. And RK Contemporary was a very special experience exhibiting digital art there. Uh, RK was there where exhibited fully digitally. I heard many positive comments, but also skepticism for data, which is easily reproduced. So uh, it was very inspiring to hear both positive and negative comments. And these are my treasures for the next step. It's my assignment, finding the good way of presenting the digital artwork. Thank you so much, RK Contemporary, for taking a big challenge with me. So NFTs, outside of our bubble here, uh, you know, it's still controversial. It's interesting because ordinals, uh, it's a different name, right? And so that's kind of interesting in that respect. And again, with the social proof that comes with an ETF from the, you know, the heart of the financial system, as we've described here, BlackRock, uh, with the social proof that comes with the ETF and all of a sudden, you know, everybody's pension plan probably has, it's going to start to own a little Bitcoin or crypto, especially with the yields, you know, 20, 18% yields on your dot there. I don't know what Ethereum's offering, but used to be 20%. It's probably lower now. Uh, but, you know, with these kind of yields, even on your USDC, uh, the financial system is just, uh, they can't say no. Uh, with those kind of yields. So my just, you know, my take on this is these negative comments will start to diminish as crypto becomes uh, part of our daily lives. Uh, and I think that's what we're starting to, we're getting the first hints of that with the social proof that comes, it, it's become legitimized from on a symbolic level, we could say with these ETFs, which is a big deal. Uh, thank you for the comment, Psycho, or interesting comment, Psycho. Uh, Zach, gas fees on Zora and many other L2s are now less than 0.001 cents. Thanks to the new upgrade, EIP4844, happy minting. So practically free. Uh, very interesting. And here, Clint Falkerson, minting on ETH layer 2 costs as much as minting on Tezos. <laughs> no big deal. This is pretty interesting because this was, again, I don't think, Tezos is the only reason, again, I think Object and Hen, the Hen website has to be given a lot of credit. Hic et nunc. Uh, I think that's here and now in Latin, if I'm not mistaken. My, my Latin's not great, as we're going to see in the Uxine work. I, yeah. uh, but uh, all to say here, I, you know, yeah, the, the minting on Tezos is no longer, you know, the only option, so to speak. And it never has, has been, but, but it's that combination of low prices as well as a credible marketplace and a brilliant website with social media-like uh, uh, user interface, you know, uh, following, notifications, probably most importantly, with the little red notification, uh, or maybe I think it might be white now, we can see. But all to say, this is a pretty interesting uh, dynamic in the very fast changing and moving blockchain space. And look at this, Anis Abdin. Foundation has six live auctions. One of them started four days ago. So, of course, with Ethereum being so expensive, now, I, th I, think, I think it dropped today at 3,500 bucks. So it's come down uh, from 4,000. But the fees to mint on Ethereum or just to do anything, you're starting at minimum $20 just to even send money around, at least in my experience. 
uh, which is kind of insane. So for you to put a bid on that you might not even win, you probably pay a hundred bucks, I'm guessing, right? How much are you going to spend on the art? So uh, I have heard kind of, you know, we saw uh, tweets about foundation going multi-chain. Uh, you wonder layer two, perhaps. Uh, so interesting there. And we're seeing kind of just more evidence of, you know, super rare trying to get back a little bit into the game here, just putting on a push. And here's another example. Super Rare John, Super Rare Roses, Rare Perkins, Super Rare Char have committed to spend $10,000 each, $40,000 for artworks listed in Rare. So you see what's, you know, we're seeing more of a push, uh, it seems, from Super Rare. So it could be interesting things coming over here. You don't know who we are. Ancient Tokens Virtual Exhibition. So we mentioned this exhibition, but now there's a video. So with, with cool audio... So, so that looks like Sabato's work there. Cool. So I'm going to go through it pretty quickly here. Just scroll through. There's Ed Marola's work. But I just want to give you kind of a feel. Like, how cool is this? And again, what would this be like with the Apple Vision Pro, just out of curiosity? Maybe that's Sky Goodman there. Uh, so just a really cool sculpture garden here in the virtual space. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, so this is in third land. I wonder what blockchain that uses. Solana, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, watch out for bitmaps too on ordinals. That's kind of like the, the uh, I was watching a great, there's a great uh, YouTube show, Block Runner. Uh, not a huge amount of people watching it. Like they get a couple of thousand views, but considering the alpha on that channel, it's just a really cool channel. Uh, they're all about the metaverse there, and they think uh, bitmaps on ordinals on Bitcoin is going to be the platform, the place, uh, the hardest data, data layer uh, going uh, in the world is on Bitcoin. So why wouldn't we build there? This kind of thinking. Very interesting thoughts there. Uh, continuing on, Gregoria Zanardi tearing off a new painting. So just cool looking work, frankly, with this kind of big shouldered. So cool work from Gregorio. And happy class, working class. We've seen this work before. I didn't realize it was so small. It's a pretty nice little painting there. Uh, so cool to see that in context uh, from working class. And Acid Boy, uh, who knew Acid Boy had this kind of soft spot in his heart for landscape painting? I don't post, post about uh, often about my paintings, but here's one of my recent pieces, Valley of Light, acrylic and markers on canvas. So uh, the softer side of Acid Boy, our favorite, you know, psychedelic abstraction artist here, one of our many favorites, uh, the master, as I like to call him. Object one, today is reveal day. We actually have some uh, Acid Boy coming up. Uh, today is reveal day. The four formidable, piece, formidable pieces of the series Al Air Libre by Heliodoro Santos, who of course uses the paint plotter tool, homemade, I believe, and now on our website, introduced by a statement by our curators, Kika Nicolela and Kableen One. Or on Belin, the solo show has opened today at Tech Contemporary Art in Copenhagen a city I need to visit. I hear great things about Copenhagen. Presenting these and three other Helio pieces on the gorgeous Any Wall art screens. Discover the works. So another, just going to sort of speed through that. How cool is that? Love to see some of the physicals of these works too, because of course they look like, they look like a paint plotter painting. So very cool there. And there's Kika Nicolela at the show with, I think her works here, because we're going to look at them here. M props. You know, uh, so looking really cool uh, working with the octopus there. Do we have, I'm ready, I'm waiting for the Bruxellois at Villa en Pain from Friday to Sunday. So I assume that's the same show. I think, but maybe it's just in somewhere else. I'm not sure. Uh, Lorna Mills last night in Jena DE. I don't even know where this is. Is that, um, that's not Deutschland. Where is DE? Uh, Emirates, a week of my work project on the Geno Gen Genoptic building, two-sided for seven paintings, curated by Robert Seidelkamm, uh, Berlin-based uh, piece in the in the collection of OMG blogs. So all to say, maybe it is in Deutschland, uh, in Germany here, not sure. Uh, so there is Lorna Mills being projected onto the side of a building. Hilarious. I love it. 
Uh, and here, this was posted after our awesome space we did with uh, Neutro Arts on Wednesday with Runetune. Uh, Gons, here are two posters we printed with Santiago at the Bosque Gracias residency where Neutro Arts was. Uh, we printed with Santiago and pasted into one of the host houses from the community. Really chill moment. Lots of silence and enjoy. So, of course, here's Santiago Rao's work. Maybe this is Gons here. Cool black and white reproductions here. So they were up to all sorts of trouble here in a great way. Uh, this was epic. Colorful life in big poster, printer copy, black and white. This is one of those most huge interventions in house as galleries too. In real life, now the digital gallery is coming too. Uh, so just super cool what those guys are up to. It's a great space, and I think it's, it is in the Twitter feed. Uh, here's Walk. So we saw this work here. Sold for 128 bucks on eBay, or at least that was the current bid. Uh, so pretty impressive. I mean, actually, pretty good deal. Uh, as you look at this uh, masterfully done work of Popeye by Walk, but I mean, on eBay, Walk continues to make it happen. Uh, so just pretty impressive. Into the art we go, or into the works themselves over the commentary. Well, look at this. Look at his Drupal waffle with this head turning work here. There's a, an intensity to this work. The painting. You gotta look like again. It's almost uh, it's almost uh, hard to pinpoint uh, why this seems to work so well. But it is become you know put it this way. It seems like Hasdrubal Waffle is kind of entering a whole new level of mastery with some of these tools here. Even just the Coca Cola here, beautifully done, loosely done. The what looks like upside down McDonald's logo mysteriously and maybe some almost sliders so it looks like mini burgers there not sure what's going on there uh and then these just beautifully painted and then with this awesome mcdonald's yellow frame here and the intensity there is an intensity to this work and these beautiful eyes and this guy smoking in the mcdonald's wow it's just a beautiful 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 work again uh the wash mechanic something about it uh, that you really, it's hard to language, uh, as McKenna would say. Look at this beautiful work by Myth. This is on uh, Nifty Gateway. Click to expand. Uh, fabulous. Just fabulous uh, with the fedora here and the Myth mask. Uh, a fabulous work and almost like a Windows XP in inspired background. Almost. Uh, you could say. Uh, just beautiful. Beautiful work here. This is $30. Uh, which is only like 20 Tezos, uh, or maybe 25 today. And this is part of Hitch Switchers. So I think they have a show uh, by Inavare. And here are all the works. So just very cool here. Uh, so check that out. That's on Nifty Gateway. As you can see, a pretty big show. Here's Spiegel's. And uh, just all sorts of stuff going on here. So cool. Uh, big show. Look at how many works there are here. That looks like an older work by RJ, but maybe it's a newer one. Interesting. So I don't know actually how this all works. Uh, continuous series of curated drops highlighting diverse art on the Ethereum blockchain. Very cool. Volume 16,000 bucks. Nice work. Here's Limbo back in action, and we got some audio on this. This is on Object. A classic, classic limbo here. I'm trying to think of who this reminds me of musically. Very nice music. Uh, limbo makes it. It's hard to stop. So. Only 350. Edition of 25. Trinitron of Death. That sounds like the Korg Trinitron. Uh, soundtrack and animation created by Limbo without the help of any AI. <laughs> so, uh, but it's almost worth mentioning because that music was good enough that maybe you start thinking that. Uh, edition of 25 just minted. I loaded this up. Uh, it was right as the show was loading up. So just minted there by... Uh, by Limbo. Here's Uxine. Interesting piece. I wish I knew my Latin a little better. Vincent Qui, uh, maybe here. See, 
live here. I'm not sure uh, what the Latin is. Artifact 01, tools of imperialist expansion. Feels like it's important to know, though, doesn't it? And here, playing with like the ancient uh, classical Greek uh, pottery here, and putting on the Grim Reaper here, beautifully painted here, great colors, and especially that yellow text, Dread times Dread. So this went for uh, 23 Tezos, edition of 21, uh, and that is on object. So shall we look up Vincent Qui? Say Vincent. Vincent Qui, just really quickly here, learn something in Latin, in English. He conquers who conquers himself. Interesting. Cool work. Always poetic there. Always interesting. From Uxin Bazaya. Every day the creative side shoots in a different way. Indeed. Interesting experimentation here from Bazaya. Beautiful patterning and everything. Uh, almost looks like a playing card or something. Very cool. Almost an Argentinian flag there with the sun. Uh, nice work from Bazaya. An edgy work from uh, Dan Control. Surprise. Edition of one. Also selling for 250 Tezos here uh, almost right away. Jack, Jackie Courtney. So uh, edgy work here on the chair and the shirt and the drone and the knife and the box and another knife. You know, and so again, reusing elements, even the landscape here from previous works and making new works. Something I've kind of thought about but never acted on. Here, Dan Control acting and selling. Uh, 250 Tezos. Nice work. Uh, Nov 1914, Gato Sobre Ongo. Not sure what that is, but they kind of look like mushrooms with a cat on it, right? Uh, if I had to guess. Uh, so another interesting work, maybe some flowers too. Cool work by Nov 1914. And Trippy Collector picking this up at Nine Tezos. Here is Stalka, Human 003, ZZ. And I think this is animated. Or not. Is this animated? Uh... There was an animated version. Maybe decide to keep it still. So cool work, all to say by Stolka, kind of a Windows operating system work. Uh, you know, really good at that, what I call contemporary illustration. Uh, has people out on dates and this sort of stuff. Uh, I'm a big fan of Stolka's work. You know who I miss is Adelia. We haven't seen Adelia for maybe, I want to say, more than a year. Feels like a year and a half since we saw Adelia's last work. Uh, continuing on, uh, Axstone. So a new one from Axstone, Gatto, which I think is Cat. This is part of that Cat exhibition that Rennie Fish is in, and that's a Super Chief uh, uh, exhibition. And so kind of playing with a video game, somewhat of a video game, right? We see like the Mario bricks almost and the question marks. They almost also look like shelves of a bedroom in this kind of house of sorts. But here we see again the video game. Uh, UI. Uh, so beautiful work here. A really beautiful work of Cats by Axstone. Reserve of 2.22 ETH. So not cheap. The ultimate cat and mouse game. That is on foundation. Beautiful work. And we continue on here. Here's Jake Studios. God bless our drip. So almost has a, I don't think we looked at this one, but there's always an interesting religious angle on Jake Studio's work, isn't there? I mean, we see the cross here, and we see what looks like a Giotto or a Cimabue, you know, uh, virgin and child that you'd see in the Uffizi. That famous room in the Uffizi where you have a Cimabue on one wall and then Giotto on the other wall with basically these extremely famous uh, Virgin Mary and baby Jesus works. So kind of very similar... Uh, 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 pose there. Now, interestingly, kind of a viewfinder of a slide, kind of retro here. So always mysterious to see the halo. Uh, Jake Studios, uh, very cool work. Even the earth here. I think this is new. Oh, this March, We may have looked at this already, but worth looking at again here. Edition of 20 for 550. Maybe post it again. Uh, just a rad work. This one is new, Blooming Creation. This is by Katarina Create. More mushrooms, as you can see here. And more nature kind of combining with the face and the head. Uh, so cool combination here. And there we have uh, some food, cherry and a tomato, maybe a strawberry there. Very interesting piece here. Edition of one and going for 20 Tezos on object. Here's Sebas Astaro. I found an opinion. 
Uh, so releasing a few works, I'm going to highlight a couple here. Kind of a powerful psychological work. And this, again, kind of looks like the like an ear or something, like the side of a head. And again, it kind of feels like this psychological uh, space here, this portrait of our psychology. It feels like a very psychological work. And again, those classic kind of Da, you know, a classic kind of De Chirico Dali, Salvador Dali move, make the long psychological shadows. Uh, nice texture there too. Very cool work. Uh, that is an addition of one for only 45 Tezos. I found the gate, addition of 20 for 5 Tezos. Kind of a similar idea here, but different. And again, playing with memory and everything, uh, just how we experience uh, the mind, seemingly. Uh, and again, great texture here. Uh, again, addition of 20 for 5 Tezos, 3 gone. Busque Gretzias picking one up. Rat in the Cellar, this is by Kudukola. Interesting piece, interesting drawing, hey? Uh, so just kind of a cool semi-abstract here, but not entirely. Uh, just a cool drawing here. By Kudukola, this is an addition of 1 for only 7 Tezos and still available. Here's one by Kazuhiro Ehara. This is from a few weeks ago, maybe almost a month ago. A Wrong Meeting Sings by Falsetto. Just a really cool kind of abstract here by a really cool experimental artist, as you can see here. Digital painting. Uh, so some really edgy digital painting uh, by uh, Kazuhiro Ehara. 25 Tezos, edition of five. And here is Ilio Givel with another surreal illustration here. As we see, this kind of almost looks like a brushwork or something with a shadow there, the sun at, on top, and this almost sunset or sunrise. Uh, interesting, again, surreal illustration, dance reserve of 0.15 ETH, just minted on the 13th there. Here's a new one by Daniel W. Corporate Dungeon 06, the janitor. And looking kind of lost there, kiddo. And so there's the janitor. So continuing, continuing the corporate series here, interesting color uh, and kind of, again, kind of a paper feel to the work, nicely kind of offset there. And interesting with the quote underneath, four Tezos, edition of 25, it looks like six are sold. And here's Ezra Eslin. I'm not sure if this is new or not. I get confused by the minted by Ezra Eslin too. I'm, I'm not sure what the standard is here, if it's a 721, 1155, owned by Jack Courtney, minted 20 hours ago. So I'm not sure if it's a new work or if it's a work that was posted and minted by the collector. Not exactly sure, but a one of one minted by the collector. Uh, so all to say, I don't remember seeing this one specifically though. So there is classic kind of apartment building, kind of has a Halloween feel to it, on fire. And then of course, what I like to call the satirical violence. And there's a princess in a, or a carriage here, a pumpkin carriage here. Uh, just cool work as ever. Where's Waldo? You know, you could almost call this whole genre. You could do a whole series and call it Where's Waldo? Uh, there's uh, Guillaume Cornet, I think is the name. Uh, you could put them in there and a couple others. Elejo, Elejo and La Flor. So Object 98, some of these paintings... Uh, we're seeing are pretty impressive. Here's another one, Gone with the Wind. So a smaller work. Um, because people are minting directly. It'd be nice if you actually, on Object 98, Object Paint, if you can multiply the export to go like 4X, for example, so that we could have this a little bigger. Uh, and where you click on it and you can really look around. But anyway, some really nice work here. Addition of 10 for two Tezos, none sold. I thought a nice piece. Here's another one where thoughts go to snack. Created using Object 98, addition of 10 for one Tezos, three sold. Uh, really interesting work here. This is Krof Krofny. Krofny. Uh, so discovering interesting artist. Here's Dustic, son of a beach. So interesting title there and nice painting. I mean, using a kind of a nice beige underpainting there or background. And then a uh, pretty fun, almost got a, has a bit of an impressionist kind of, from a thematic point of view vibe. I think this is brilliant. This work, Summer Vibe. Uh, so interesting works here coming out of Object 98. I thought this one in particular. I was almost tempted to start with this. Uh, this is a pretty nice painting. Simple, you know, in a way that an Impressionist painting is nice. Like, just really nice work. Uh, Dustic. So a nice way to discover new artists, too. Here's another one. Amirabis Sadeki, Adam and Eve. Uh, so just more interest it's really interesting to see what people are doing with object 98 there's a snake there's the apple 
interesting work. And I think this was posted in the community. I thought this was pretty interesting. This is by Ilya Barabin. Good night, friends. And this is listed on object. I thought an interesting combination of this, well, it looks like kind of an object 98 or Microsoft Paint, you know, simple brush here. And then with these big pixelated marks, just interesting contrast. And then a different version over here in the background, different kind of export. And here's without all the kind of pixelation, retro pixelation. So interesting work there. Here is Muji with a new work, Personal Art Factory. Indeed, a very fun uh, work here uh, where we see a nice kind of seeming laptop building with a smokestack here. And then a Saturn like planet in the background. Uh, very cool. Uh, from Yuji. This is an edition of 16 for 8 Tezos, and they're going. Look at this. So are there any left? There are three left. Nice work from Yuji. Here's Figments. Uh, this is 8 Tezos, now 15 Tezos on secondary, The Lost Art of Losing Yourself. So new work from Figments. I think it's an edition of 11, if I'm not mistaken there. Again, playing with these kind of horizontal pixels. Uh, so just more very cool work. I think it's using, if I remember right, a retro software and then animated in GIMP, I believe. People like animating in GIMP. I haven't used GIMP. I've used GIMP for an hour in my life, two hours, and I, yeah, I kind of gave up on it. Uh, but I think if you stick with it, there's a lot of benefits to it. And I haven't tried it in basically eight years. So uh, I'll just say Figments knows what he's doing, also known as Cap'n. Very cool work. Now 15 on secondary. As we pass the one hour marks, so we're going to speed up a bit here in order to note, not provoke the computer gods here. Uh, Chaz, beautiful pink Game Boy here. So new work here and just fun. And there are some cookies. Looks like a cooking game here. Cooking Mama, edition of five for 10 Tezos and offers coming in. And so I think it's 10 Tezos on secondary. Indeed it is by Akira Dice. And here are just a nice simple work here by Brain Dead. Uh, creator ID... Uh, 2024 Rainbow Edition. 2024, indeed. And so, again, very cool work. I wonder how big this is. Nine colors. Again, small works, I always just think ordinals. It'd probably look pretty darn good on ordinals, wouldn't it? Uh, 50 Tezos, edition of one. Nico, maybe VGA was enough in sketches. Uh, just an interesting rendering here of this uh, cube that seems animated, maybe a blender type object given the Petsky or ASCII treatment. Uh, it looks like it got quite a bit of uh, love here. So nice work, nice color in the foreground and then gray in the background. Here is Slava 3 on exchange.art. So on Solana here, uh, selling additions. And let's see if this loads up here. So again, I suspect Slava 3 is exporting using different softwares and combining them. Uh, and creating just cool, uh, very cool works, adding more color in. Used to be more of a one-bit uh, kind of black and white artist, now adding color in 69 frames, 840 by 840, going for $11 each. And here is Violet Trip with a new work. This is also on exchange.art. We'll just let it load up a bit here. Here we go. And again, you see this kind of classic trope now, the operating system window here, and then a bit of a a tunnel in the background and some dithering with a character, I think moved by AI, Stable Diffusion, Illustrator, Photoshop, and After Effects. So several different softwares here. Uh, and this is going for $16 on explore.art. Plus was Gamma P8. And here, uh, just a cool work here, another experiment by Francoise Gamma. Very cool, that is on object and that is an edition of 30. And it looks like this, the person, the buyer who just bought all, you know, you got to be happy for Francoise Gamma on a certain level, sells out uh, at, uh, and you wonder, yeah, like they probably bought all 30, uh, amazingly. I guess you maybe it's using certain tools you can do that, because I think someone would come in, but maybe they just ran in. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Element Lee, view, adding more color to the mix. Uh, so interesting piece, kind of almost looks like, you know, almost looks like magical over here with these little beautiful cross dithers here. Uh, kind of looks like an architectural structure, maybe looking from the inside out. And here's the person, you know, almost like it's the visual field, right? See the person here? And this is like the, ed the fuzzy edges of your visual field. 
very interesting artist, elementally, as usual. View, right? Uh, Nine Tezos edition of 20. And selling one so far. And here's from Braun. Screen Breaker 01. Uh, looks fabulous. Love the colors and everything. Continues to be super interesting here. Beautiful abstract series. Here's Screen Breaker number two. Cool titles. 23 Tezos. And again, I think these are editions of one. Uh, so just cool work here. Sorry if I messed with your screen. And yes, yeah, so that's 23 Tezos by Braun. Here's Guandanarian, uh, which is with an interesting work here. Kind of almost all I want is you by my side, almost fitting into the pixel art factory thing, but not quite, but still different. But over here in the top left, kind of an early artist you'll find on when you start exploring object in Tezos, at least for me. And let's continue here. That is, I think that's an edition of one, or sorry, edition of 33, for 33 Tezos, so not, yeah, so uh, impressive. Uh, so very impressive. Walk, Diesel. So we got some more works here uh, in the series of the plants. And here's a one of one. And this went for 14 Tezos. Nice sale. Uh, sometimes these can go, this one's going for two Tezos to August Ground, who I still need to reach out to, to do a space. Dina Chem. So all to say, uh, very cool. Uh, work here from Walk. Uh, continuing on, DJ Kiro and Rannick Steer with a work. They also have another work, I think, on Zora, uh, Wired. So here's a work, and this was put on Object. So again, you see the combination. You kind of get the sense that the shapes were made by Rannick Steer and maybe the glitching by Kiro, but who knows? Uh, and this went one sold so far for 370 to Joe Howell. It's cool work there. And here's Kurt Hustle Collective, who we were discussing earlier. So let's, uh, let's just give them, let that play here. Pray to the computer gods, my friends. Oh, we'll see if Kurt Hustle can play here. What are we going to do? I hesitate to, let's see. May have to, we'll try reloading. We'll see if it works. Taking a risk here. As you can see, the freezing frame here. I don't want to provoke the computer. Here we go. You can hear the buzz. <laughs> It almost looks like AI, doesn't it? Uh, it Shoot the yellow light! Like, we were really processed AI, who knows? Uh, kind of has a Star Trek, 1960s Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica kind of look. So, all pretty wild here. Uh, Space Hustlers Disc 2, and there's the CD there on top. And here also on Zora, Dolphin Zone DZ, DZ3. Uh, so there you can mint this on Zora. 11 minted so far. Nice. Uh, so continuing on, cool work from Kurt Helso Collective. Uh, max capacity times Cuatro Cero Nueve. This is posted. It's kind of an interesting analog video glitch. Cool music. So cool work there, posted by Bodacious Pirate. I'm not sure if that's new or not. Just posted on X there, and here is uh, Bosque Gracias Visual Basic. Cool title. Only an eight-second clip. Interesting piece, eh? Very satisfying and fun. Like again, when you're in that contemporary art museum. I'd, You'd enjoy this piece, or at least I would enjoy this piece, truly. Magazine collage glued on wall, filmed with Handycam, and recorded on CRTV, a visual basic novel, very interesting. Uh, edition of one for 10 Tezos from Bosque Gracias. And here's Simulacro, Simultaneity. It's an interesting video here. All sorts of interesting video coming up in on the blockchain here.
cool audio too. So just interesting, kind of like that uh, facial recognition software or AI surveillance camera type theme going on here. Simultaneity, seven Tezos each, three gone. Nice. So work continues to sell here on the blockchain. Odlavox, this is my first post here. So thank you for posting in the community here. Transformation, just interesting uh, artists here. Nice textures, something different here. Uh, different kinds of textures, interesting green landscape, uh, as we see here. And I'm going to scroll through it a little bit just to get us a quick feel, a quick, quick. Th so if you're curious, just go to the Artist Journal uh, community page and you can uh, follow Odlavox and also see if that's minted somewhere. Cool uh, screenshot here from Dr. Version. Uh, cool, just static uh, work. Great color, uh, as you can see here. There's a lot of power in doing this kind of video glitch uh, process and then uh, just using it as a source for color. Beautiful. GM. Here is Ruslan Vyaltsev, NFT GM, NFT champions. And there we are, just a cool kind of semi-abstract work here. Uh, and very cool there. And this we looked at. And Dina Chang uh, releasing a work here. I'm not sure if that's copyright or not, the music. I assume it's hers, uh, but just in case, so the video doesn't disappear on YouTube. So all to say, just cool work, outtake, kind of looks like a work in progress or something from Dina Chang, just interesting abstraction. And here's uh, Renki with another rad work, at uh, Atashika. Look at that, just continuing to push it. This is what happens when you put out a work every day for, you know, what's becoming years. You know, it's been at least a year, I'm sure. Uh, this just keeps on pushing things. Just very cool. Addition of one. Uh, and interestingly, uh, not selling it. That's another strategy. You don't need to sell your work. You don't need to list it. Maybe offers come in, but you don't need to sell your work. Here's Salawaki. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I am still me. And so let's take a look here. This looks like a GLB. Yes, I can feel. So the famous trout. Yes, I am still me and touching what looks like a dead trout here. Now, interestingly, it's animated. It's moving, but I can move it. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. And that's kind of interesting, too. Uh, Four Tezos, edition of 20. And we have another one, proof of existence. And I think this is so kind of a very, if not the same work, but a different title. And this one's an addition of one. So very interesting. And here is Acid Boy uh, with some work here, kind of something different from Acid Boy. Let me just make this large. And I don't think there's any volume here. So Acid Boy in the studio. Uh, when he's taking a break from landscape painting, uh, Acid Boy makes uh, very psychedelic animated works, as you'll see here. So just more interesting experimentation from Acid Boy. Here's another one. I think this is just listed now using Matic, interestingly, uh, on Rarible. Distorted Matter, 10 of 10 available for 49 Matic. Uh, and so here it is. Uh, so very interesting. I'm completely all for, you know, especially going on obscure. I don't want to, like, I... Uh, Matic isn't obscure, uh, but uh, there's something to be said for going on blockchains that are not like uh, overly celebrated. You know, go on Cardano, go on Polkadot, go on uh, go on Matic, right? So or on Polygon, right? So just interesting. Or go on platforms that aren't you know uncommon platforms. I think it's really smart and cool. Uh, too much, too young, too soon. This is Stefan Stephen Dibus. Uh, great to see Stefan Dibus' work again. We'll see if there's any volume there. This is an edition of 15 on Solana, two sold. Nice work. And yeah, just an another really cool work. Of course, artist on Super Rare uh, that I think we started the show with about a year ago, a year and a couple of months ago. Uh, very cool to see Stephen Dibus back. Uh, just cool work. Again, that is on Solana, too much. And that was just listed, I believe. Here's Kika Nicolela as we go into the abstract. And again, I'm going to speed up a bit here just so we uh, don't kill the hard drive and save the show. Uh, so look at this. Look at these great textures. Look at these great shapes. Uh, and just, and again, you can tell it's AI when you look at the eyes there. Uh, very, again, just uh, 
the M props, M props, and Kika Nicolela here. So this is an edition of ten. Now it's three hundred fifty Tezos. Uh, so yeah, interesting. Maybe I think you get the physical with it because we were seeing Kika pose with the physicals. So very cool. I think we saw these works in the gallery there. So this is also three hundred fifty edition of ten. Uh, so very cool. This combination of uh, and that's. I wonder if this is a photo of the work because you see this texture here. You know, like M-Props already has texture. So what happens if you print it on something like, I think it was cotton paper that Kika was using. Wow. Just getting very interesting over here in AI land and especially with the physical renditions here. Oct Octopus Mirage number two. A great series here by Kika Nicolela. So big congrats on this. Uh, this looks fantastic. Uh, just very cool. Continuing with the octopus theme that Kiko that Kika has worked on uh, for uh, at least a year, probably a lot longer. Uh, continuing on, Nega Negar Sepher, uh, GM Lovely Fam. So co another cool AI artwork uh, over here, uh, and GM Lovely Fam. So just cool. This is posted on X. I don't see a link. Uh, I always think of the Nick from uh, Gamma IO, put the link if there's a um, somewhere to mint it or somewhere to buy it. Paralysis, intro void. And so another interesting AI painting here, as you can see. So AI, right, continues to be very, very interesting here. And then it looks like it's combined with some digital painting. That almost looks like a sampled brush, doesn't it? Uh, very interesting. Paralysis, cool title. Digital painting and AI, as we were saying there. So addition of 12, eight Tezos each, and already five gone. Nice work. And here is Lily Illo. Uh, and here, uh, as we see here, just more chairs. And kind of distorted chairs and everything. Just nice, simple subject matter and cool textured painting. Again, what would this look like printed on cotton? And a blueprint, I believe also from Lily Illo, making plans for future forms. These blueprints are great too. Uh, just great, simple colors here, like AI blueprints of these kind of speculative chairs. I love it. Kenick Zapata at the office. Very interesting, original uh, uh, AI artwork here. They look like, uh, it almost looks like it's a financial center or something. Uh, who knows what a uh, very cool cryptic work from Kenick Zapata. Here is Mo Wellington, La, Bo La Boheme. Uh, this is posted on X. Another just cool painting here, AI painting. And here is, I think, Psycho. Psycho Ihera, spring is coming soon. I started exploring stable diffusion. It's fun to combine models. So it's getting pretty interesting, isn't it? So nice birds and flowers here, combining models. I'm going to have to try all this out, put it on the list of things to do. And here is Sulkian. Very interesting uh, artist, Julian Sileko. Leave you some CTs from the Counter-Strike. That So this looks like uh, AI of a video game, doesn't it? I think that's what's going on here because we were seeing Sulkian was playing with AI uh, on Zora. So just really interesting work, kind of a Doom uh, interface there. And here's Von Doyle. This is a minute 11, so we can't post all of it, but Chasing Shadows, uh, kind of an ambitious video here. Edition of 13 for 35. And it looks like an AI video. And so pretty ambitious video work here. Just get the music a little bit. So we zoom through this show here. Kind of a Renaissance painting feel or 17th, 16th century, but with phones. So just a wild work, kind of a heads up here. Again, we can't go through the whole thing from Von Doyle on all the distractions, I think. Chasing shadows. So very cool there. As again, we're seeing a ton of uh, video and AI, vi I think that's AI video. This is Mikey de la Creme, who of course I follow on X. That is a glitch. Tea time at the Wu Mansion, part of the upcoming Ponder Wave 3 drop on Arzora. So another interesting painting here. This one having a bit of a Japanese sort of feeling to it. Japanese print uh, from the 19th century kind of feel to it. So nice painting there, all having tea, I think. And here's Tooks, a Moku. Uh, here the sirens come from me. Interesting combination of what looks like manga 
and like almost like uh, impressionist like brush strokes. We cool, interesting mix here. Interesting uh, description text there too. Edition of one for three hundred Tezos from Tukes, and here is Danielle King dancers as we zoom to the finish here. Uh, again from the Artificial Memory series. So again, looking real but not. Uh, and is this M props? I think this is just uh, regular uh, AI, just regular AI. And here's Mo uh, SHIT, who of course I follow as well. Uh, super interesting, also with a kind of a wild title there. Uh, and we see Hakusai's wave, and then this person here uh, fixing this, uh, what looks like a computer in the front. Uh, fascinating. Uh, also a Japanese print feeling. No hygiene with a couple here. Kiss. Uh, just more experimental AI artworks. Here's another one, Mania. Uh, and these are both on object editions of one, 10 Tezos. And as we go into the physicals here, GM Everyone Millionaire available on exchange.art. So here... We can see what looks like uh, maybe money printing in there. So just really nice physical artwork from Eloy uh, there. And here's Machine, Airbrush on Paper, Open Edition. So this was hilarious. Uh, so Messi, that is the name. Lionel Messi uh, kissing the World Cup here. Uh, so all the highlights here. And there's a great video, actually. This is on Zora. And there's a great video that uh, Machine put out of her doing the airbrush, actually, process. So very cool there. Patricia Paludanus, uh, interesting, just found on Instagram, in interesting painting. Kind of looks like a music instrument. Uh, suspension of disbelief, colored pencil on paper. Pretty nicely done. And here's one by Abel Berger Bleu Roi. Uh, L'adieu au visage double. So again, beautiful non-finito work here. And again, there's something very powerful about not going to the edges, isn't there? Uh, and you just got to love the textures here and everything. Just beautiful materials, like a gorgeous artwork. When it's put in context there, a gorgeous artwork. This person is going to do just fine, is my impression here. Uh, beautiful. And that is your show, my friends. Thank you for joining me again. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. The weather is fantastic, so I'm going to run out the door here. Till next time, take care. <laughs>